Today on Nation, we're going to talk about kicking a client to the curb. It's a tongue twister, but it's something that is crucial for your business growth. How can you do it? How to do it tactfully? When to do it? When not to do it? Hopefully you can get around it, but either way, hopefully you pick out a couple of good ideas from the show. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's going on everybody? Jersey here from Window Cleaning Resource and you're here. What is up to all of you in the nation? Everybody here who is uh, super loyal. I just want to say like last week, man, you guys are killing it by putting orders in through me. Like you guys are really, really amazing. It just makes me want to do this. So thank you very much. Thanks for even just texting me and saying what's up. I love the show. I really, really appreciate it. If it's your first time here, what's up? Have a look around. We're into the hundreds in the episodes. You have lots of stuff to catch up on. Hopefully they don't suck. And hopefully you grab a bit of information from every episode. If not, just have some fun hanging out and listening to some chatter. Uh, if you are part of the elite, like I just mentioned, somebody who puts your orders in through me, your window cleaning and pressure washing orders, it's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is because of you that I get to have name brand protein drinks. No, but I do appreciate it, guys. Uh, if you want to order through me, I would ama- it would be amazing, and I would love it. And uh, my information is 862-312-2026. Please save that number. How we work it here is I want to be your rep. I want to be your guy. You got a guy, right? 862-312-2026. I want to be the one that puts your orders in for you. Go ahead. Throw everything in your cart. At the end of the day... Uh, and just text me, be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart, put it in. Because at the end of the show, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off your order if you put it in through me. But every other time, just order through me. That's all I can say. If you haven't gotten your ticket yet to the huge convention, it's coming up. I got my plane booked. I got my hotel book booked. I got everything, man. I am going to be there Tuesday through Sunday. It is August 8th and 9th is the actual show. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on before and after. You can say what's up to me. Anybody else from WCR? Of course, there's the trade show, the classes, the everything. It's amazing. Go to thehugeconvention.com and uh, check it out. Get your tickets. They will go up in price. Or call me and I can get those tickets in for you too. (sighs) 862-312-2026. Shameless plug done. Uh, but this week I got a couple quick shout outs to do. Thank you guys. If you're going to put comments down, go to YouTube, put a comment, any comment, big little dumb, be a Ryan Fuster, Fuster, and just a wavy thing, anything, because it helps our algorithms. If you do that and a thumbs up for YouTube help get more views basically. And if you are listening to this on iTunes or any of the other platforms, review it. I now officially have a 4.9 out of 5. That's a bummer. It was 5 forever. And uh, somebody said they didn't like it. Or gave it a 4 star or something. So go out there, do it. Review it. Give it a thumbs up and everything else. And uh, it's awesome. But anyway, uh, shout outs for this week is Sean. Jonas, what's up? Sarah and Chad Monroe, what's going on you two? With gold, uh, I didn't write it down, but gold window cleaning, I think. Sorry if I screwed that up. Jacob Headley, what's going on? Trevor Spari is another one. You guys are all awesome on YouTube. Um, Yeah, if you're commenting, I'm going to give you a shout out if I remember. And if you're putting orders in through me, say, what's up? Give me a shout out. And I'll remember to put it down there and uh, I'll give you a shout out. You'll be fake famous for two seconds. So there you go. But this week, we're going to be talking about kicking a client to the curb. Now... With all this being said, there's some people that I've done, talked about kind of in the same realm, and uh, it kind of got a lot of hate. And the reason is, is because it wasn't really, some people really want to have customers and clients, and they don't care really the customer or client or what they're doing, they just want to have the most, and that's how they feel that they win. That's not really how this goes either. Um, Kicking a client to the curb means if they're more trouble than they're worth, more money, uh, if they are just a pain in the butt, you got to get rid of them. Make yourself a stronger company. The only way you're going to do that 
is to kind of weed them out every now and then. Now, if you're new in window cleaning or pressure washing or janitorial or wherever you are and what you're doing, it's harder to do that because a client is worth so much more, right? That person is somebody who you can rely on. You need the money. You need the business. You want the referrals. You have all that. I get it. But understand that your prices when you start are not going to be the prices when you are two years into it, right? So prices have to change. Um, you're going to realize that some of your pain in the butt customers are like, I don't care. They're paying in the butt, but I made my money. I could eat groceries. <laughs> you know, those people are not worth it down the road. And again, not a cocky statement where you get to that point and you're like, I don't need you. Because that's not the point. But you got to understand that making a healthy company means you're making, you're getting customers that have, are yeah, customers that are paying the right amount, of course, to be on par, not stepping over dollars to make pennies. And they have to be worth your time. There's just people out there. We've heard of it. We've seen the stories. I had a client who would not pick up dog poop in their yard ever. There was so much poop in their yard. So much. It was all over ladders and hoses. You couldn't water feed there. It was every time when we talked to me, hey, when we show up, we do need to get that picked up because we drag hoses and it's making a big mess. And and she says, yeah, we don't do that. We don't we don't pick it up ever. I said, well, you know, for what we're doing, she says, you're just going to have to do a different process. I said, um, oh, okay. Um, and I dropped her. That's, that's how that one went. Like, this is kind of drastic situations, and I've... Done it for a little bit of time. I've been in the industry 13, 14 years, whatever. So you run across some of these weird ones. But here's some different examples and kind of how to tailor kind of your objections, if you will, and cleaning house. Just doing some general upkeep in your company. Now, the first one is the uh, notorious price is wrong client. Now, if you've not, check out the podcast on pricing. It is a good one. You will enjoy it. It will show you and talk about different things and how to raise prices and keep regular. But I know people who don't ever raise prices, and here's where the problem is kind of comes in. You're going to have people that if you're busy or you're not, that are still at that old, old price. Somebody you knew you bid wrong, and you just got it done and went, I'm not even going to touch it. It's just it's wrong. But then they come back, and it's still wrong. And it's hard because you are so stinking loyal to these people, right? Somebody had said that in the comments. It's very, very hard, and I get that. But here's the thing. You have options. You can either raise their price or you can very kindly drop them. Um, And there's always an option, right? If you can raise their price, awesome. But here's how you go about it. Now, I've had people who have been pretty drastically... Uh, off and it was three, four years all of a sudden they called back and I should have done a re- rebid on it and I didn't and I got done with the project and I knew that this project was a pain in the butt and um, I said so here's your price your price is we'll just for examples say you're at 149 but your house is a 299 house we do have to raise your price to that but we spread that out. We're going to do that over the next two cleanings that you have so that you'll be back up to par and we'll get you in there from that. But we do have to raise it. I just want to let you know before the next cleaning so that if you decide that it's just too much for you, you can always look for someone else. I always hate raising prices and I don't mean to, but it just has to be on par with the rest of our customers. And a lot of people appreciate the fact that you let them know and they appreciate the fact that that you gave them time to decide on what they want to do. Now, a lot of them are going to find other bids, and that's cool. You're not trying to be the lowest price, right? You need to be where you're at. Now, if said client says, well, that's way too much, I can find somebody who could do it even less than you, I say, oh, man, now I do appreciate it. Just make sure that they're insured, and, and uh, I hope they do a great job for you. You know, but I do appreciate everything we've been able to do the past few years, and I appreciate you as a client. And leave on a good term. Always, always leave on a good term. But sometimes people are like, oh, man, I appreciate that. I always figured it was a little low, and I was just going to ride it out as long as I could. And I said, no, I definitely appreciate that. You know, when we bid it, we bid it incorrectly, and we've been doing raises and everybody else's, and we just haven't done yours yet, so we're going to have to do that. And they're very cool with it because they get it. They know what the industry is. Now, if somebody bids against you and they beat you in price where you're going, fine. You know, I'm not going to be in the race to the bottom. I'm just not. So that's one of them 
kind of get there. Now, when somebody's super loyal, they've already spent money with you. They've been a customer. Maybe they've given you referrals. Maybe they've given you reviews, right? It is awesome. So give them the most respect you can in leaving uh, if it does come down to that. But you have to get your customers up to the same spot. Now, if you're not raising prices every service, um, not mind you, every six months or whatever, you're doing yourself a disservice. The cost of living goes up, right? Giving a 1%, 2%, 3% increase, which is nothing, but it continues to help keep that up. Bread has gone up, milk has gone up, gas has gone up, insurance has gone up. All that has gone up since 10 years ago. Why are you not raising prices on services, right? So you got to do that because otherwise you get in this predicament where all of a sudden you have to raise prices by 100% and then you're just SOL and how you're going to do that tactfully. It's very, very hard. So do it with your clients. Pick the lowest priced ones. Now what I do every single year is I pick the lowest, the, the five um, lowest priced or wrongly priced jobs. Now track everything. Track as much as you can. Get in the habit of being the most amazing spreadsheet analysis ever. But we go through and uh, every time somebody says the price needs to go up on this one when my when guys come back, it gets noted. And then we pull those up and those five every year kind of get put in. Now, that could be very small. It could just be, hey, you know what? We're at, you know, one, two, nine, or we're at 249. We really should be at 299. Or we should be at 269. You know, they got other windows. Or, um, you know, they really, when we first did the house, it was empty. Now they have a lot of stuff in the windows, whatever it may be. But continuing to get those people up to where they need to be is really beneficial. Now let them know. Don't ever, 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 ever ever bait and switch in anything that you do. Why? Not only does it just ruin the industry, but it ruins your reputation. It makes people think that you are a scum piece of blah, 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 carpet cleaner guy who, any room, $25. And they get done and it's a $480 bill, right? Well, we'll clean it, but you know, you have to keep the dirty water or whatever dumb little things they do, right? Um, So don't do a bait and switch, but let people know. And they're usually usually pretty good. I could tell you maybe one or two that I've ever had that really put up a big stink. And um, yeah, you just, you have to kind of go with it. Just making yourself that much more strong as a company. The other one that I've had where I've had to kick a client is because their windows suck. This is another really, really big one. We've gotten on jobs where we do most of our bidding. 99% of our bidding we do over the phone. I've seen and done everything in my opinion, right? So I can tell by a couple questions uh, how much to bid. I always ask the questions, what type of windows are they? When it's a nice day, do you open them, slide them up and down, or do you slide them side to side, or do you crank them out? That tells me what kind of window it is, right? The style of window. Oh, now on those same days, you slide it up and down. Is there another pane of glass behind that? You have to open the tabs up in spring to get to the screen. I'm in Wisconsin for that. I have storm windows. You may not have storm windows. I'm in North Carolina now, and I don't have storm windows. So storm windows suck. Um, So you ask a couple questions. You get it. You see the house using Google Maps and everything else. Very seldom do you get kind of messed up price-wise. But you know pretty quickly if you are. But you can't always tell the condition of windows. And I've gotten to places where I've just not been able to open them. I've had painted-in windows. Listen, I'm, I know a lot of you guys have cut windows open and everything else. You've done the, the hammer fist trick and everything else. I am not that guy. I'm not going to work that hard on a window that I'm going to break by doing that. It's just not worth it to me. So if a window is unfunctional, and I try. I'm not the guy that's like, oh, well, well, I can't do it. But if it's unfunctional, the window does not open, I'm going to bring it up to the homeowner and say, hey, So I've had it where the entire house has been like this. I had a house where they said that they lived there 16 years and never got the windows cleaned. And all the windows were siliconed shut. Why somebody would silicone them? I have no idea. It was absolute awfulness. And I got in and she put up a big thing. She said, you said you could clean them. And I said, I certainly can. I can clean the inside of the windows where we can walk up and touch. I can clean the outside of them where I can walk up and touch. But the in-betweens is just not possible. Now, if you want to go and take your liability to open those windows up for us, I can explain how to do it. Our insurance just won't cover it. That's what I always say because 
If I break a window trying to open it, I don't even want to go through insurance, much less if they would cover it for uh, negligence. Maybe they consider it. I don't know. But I'm not going to go through that because the amount of money it takes me to charge you to spend an extra two, three times as long there, you're not going to pay anyway. And I don't want to do it truthfully, right? So there has been jobs where the windows are just pain in the butts. We've had jobs where the mullions, uh, that is the grid that's in the window, uh, we've had them where all the pins have broken out and they're just dry rotted. Mullions are the dumbest and worst things that could possibly be in a window besides storm windows. Now, comment down below if you're watching on YouTube. If it is the worst thing, just tell me the worst window you could possibly get to. Comment down below on YouTube. But they're awful. Now, the whole time we're there, we're trying to put these pieces back together like puzzles. And I finally had said to the customer, I said, listen, um, unfortunately, with the damage and deterioration that's been done to these windows over time, the windows are great, but the mullions are not. Now, we can do a couple things. I can take all these mullions down. And you just won't have that grid pattern. You'll be able to see much clearer out those windows. Or before we come, you'll have to take them down and then put them back up. Uh, it just helps us. It's just for us to take them down. It just doesn't make sense anymore. I don't want to damage anymore uh, to those. And I know it's a big thing because the homeowner would try to help. And she was very, very sweet and, and knowing that they weren't great. And she said, you know what? I'm so sick of those things. Let's take them all down. We took all the mullions down. And uh, I think she burned them or something. Then I don't know what she did. They were all wood mullions. But she didn't do anything to them. Now, I had another lady who had the same problem. Super, super bad. And uh, the next time we got there, she had a custom carpenter come and rebuild all of the mullions into the windows. I couldn't even imagine how much money all to have the look of gridded windows. I don't get mullions. In between panes, that's what I have in my house. Fine. But the other ones, whatever. So explaining it to people, they know, you know, you're never going to tell somebody, hey, your windows are horrible to open, saying it nicely. And they're going to be like, what? No, I never have. Pro people know, right? I've had houses where side-by-side -side sliders, the big problem with those is as house shift, it unaligns the tracks, right? And then you get pinching in the windows and they just don't open. That's very common. People know, oh yeah, that one in the living room, I can never get it open. Well, you know, I, I apologize. The side-by-side -side slider storms that we run um, in this particular condo association is a very big problem. And I can't clean in between those paints. Really, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing I can do because I can't get in between the panes. You know, if I do, it's going to damage those frames. It's going to break the glass. And it's going to be worse than not than having a little bit of dirty one. And, uh, oh, man, you know, that's, that's really bad. I said, well, you can always replace it. It's not, not the cheapest. And they go, oh, man, I checked. They're expensive. I said, I know. You know what's cheaper than that, though? It's just closing the blinds. And they go, ha, 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 ha. And I go, ha, 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 And that's what we do, right? But we all have our little uh, jokes that kind of lighten the thing. But people know. They get it. They understand. So telling somebody that their windows aren't functioning is okay. Now, when you're doing jobs like that, that the windows suck, and you just say they're so bad, you don't ever want to do them again. The tactful way to make your exit or kicking them to the curb is to say, with the level of deterioration in your windows, now, mind you, this is what I say, it's blah, blah, blah. But I say the level of the deterioration of your windows, we just can't clean them anymore because I know that we're going to be damaging them very soon. But I know that new windows may be in your, you know, in, in your future here. And I would love nothing more than to clean those windows when you do get them. I would love it. Not only that, but we may be able to give you a discount because your windows are going to be more functional and easier for us to clean. But when you get those windows, let me know. We'll we'll rebid it, recalculate it, and we'll keep them looking awesome for you. You know, people understand that that's a problem, but people also appreciate the truth. And sometimes you say, hey, your windows are just so bad I can't clean them. Or painted frames. Your windows are just so chipping, glazing is coming out and you won't... We do glazing every now and then you haven't been able to get them fixed yet you haven't i just we can't clean them until they do get fixed because it just doesn't work for us it's very hard for us to do that job properly and i just don't feel happy leaving that way sometimes people are like that um sometimes people are a little bit more standoffish but this is what's strengthening your company i would 100 percent rather do a job of full casement crank out style windows than a storm job I don't care if the storm jobs pays twice as much or three times as much. It doesn't matter. 
Storm windows suck. My fingers hurt. Your hands hurt from slamming them in every window. And the things don't just function right. So picking windows that work better means you're happier while you're working. Your crews are not getting so fatigued. And you're just getting better results all around. That's what the benefits of kind of dropping customers is when you need them. Now, there's always people out there who are slow payers. Slow payers are another big problem. They're, they're just... I don't even know what it is. There's just people out there who just want to take all of the time to pay you and it's just not right. Especially when your policy, which we changed our policy personally, which made things amazingly easier, but we changed our policy to when we leave, the service has to be paid for at that time of service. If you're going to be gone when we're when we're done, we need to serve pay, payment then before, but we still do have that 100% satisfaction. Guaranteed. That's what we say. But there's always people out there, oh yeah, I'll get it for you. And then you spend time and uh in my case an employee's time uh who our office manager who then has to call to collect like that doesn't make sense for me to take an invoice where i've done the work and pay somebody to then try to get my money it just doesn't work so either get a card from them that you can run every single time let them know that the change is happening or say that you know unfortunately with your job your 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 you know, uh, job, we just, you know, our policy is that we do need payment beforehand. And I know you don't want to pay uh, at time of service. So we're going to have to just kind of part ways right now. Uh, if anything changes in the future, we'd love to help you. Now, this is the one that's really hard because sometimes people say, I don't want to give you a credit card. Okay, so we do need to check then before you, I'm not going to do that. All right, well, I do apologize. You know, unfortunately, that is our policy. Uh, and, uh, you know, if, if anything does change, you feel more comfortable doing that, then we'd love to come back. You know, making that kind of thing, I know people go, well, what the heck, you're going to lose a customer. Yes, I am. But I'm also not going to lose a bunch of money chasing somebody down who's not paying me. We had a customer, and they were our largest at the time, largest paying customer. It was great. We'd show up. We had everybody. We were getting subs from other companies. We just got there in, in in just huge, right? They would give us, the job would be done. I'd call the facilities manager and say, hey, we're done. Oh, awesome, man. Yeah, look good. Hey, uh, there was a drip out on the blah, 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 whatever. If there was any issues, we'd take care of them real quick. The next day, call them back up. Say, hey, we were out there. Hey, sorry again for that. We double-checked everything too and, you know, everything looked good. Oh, man, everything looked great. Let me get you that card. He would give me a card and yes, credit card fees sucked on a large job. But I got the money right there. High five. Job done. Money. I didn't have to float all that paycheck for that like 11, 12 guys that were cleaning, right? The downside came when I called the facility manager and he said, hey, everything looks great, but I need you to call accounts payable. That's how we have to do things. And I said, oh, okay, well, I'll call them. Hey, this is Jersey. XYZ window cleaning. I just talked to so-and-so, and they said to call you, everything looked good, and I could get that card from you. So, oh, yes, no, we don't do credit cards anymore. We are 90 now. So, pardon me? I said, yeah, yeah, we, uh, we will pay that invoice within the 90 days. I said 90 days. Why in God's green earth does somebody who has a multi-billion dollar company, a global company, that we did work for, need to pay something in 90 days. I'm a little window cleaner. I need that money. You don't need 90 days to pay a bill. You don't need 90 days to pay a bill. That's ridiculous. It's absurd. I said, well, we've been doing this contract for quite a while, and it's never been 90 days. Like We can't do 90 days. It was never in there. Well, that's our policy. It took me days of getting through people to get through people to get through people to then say, we can't accept 90 days. We were never on 90 days. You can't just change that on us and not have 90 days. Now it's just not possible. We got them down to a 30 day pay, which was still miserable compared to a credit card, but I got a check instead of a credit card. And uh, we ended up picking it up within like seven or eight days, I think is what they finally said the check was ready. Whatever, why did you need 90 days? But you let people know that job would have been very, very hard for us to move at the time. It was the largest job we had. And uh, it would have been very hard to just kind of go, well, they pay too slow, I'm out. But if a house does it, it's a little bit easier. Just take all these. These are just ideas. Take them all with a grain of salt and change things accordingly. But make sure you make yourself stronger that way. Um, 
Another one is somebody is too far away. That's another one that I've, I've done before where I've had to uh, kind of kick them to the curb. But the reason was, was that we had areas where we were kind of going into and uh, ended up not. Or we just picked somebody up from somebody else and they were like an hour and 15 minutes away to do a $200 account or a hundred and something dollar account. Just not by anybody. And unfortunately, at that time, uh, we had done sub work for somebody in the area and we switched it over and said, hey, I'm going to have you meet up with somebody else that's in that area to sub. Um, and I sent that person to somebody else. Now, yes, we lost the account. We still kept our sub work for everything else. But in that area, we just didn't travel to anymore. It doesn't make sense for me to drive two and a half hours round trip for 200 bucks and do the work. It just doesn't make sense, especially when you're sending a crew of two guys. Think about that. Two and a half hours. That's five hours of driving. Five man hours of driving for a job. It just doesn't make sense. Now, with that being said, if you are trying to get into an area, it's the only way that you can do it is to eat it a little bit on some of these and sell your butt off in those areas. Once you get the work in those areas, it's going to be so much easier. But until you do, you're going to be losing money. Now, I was not going that way. We had turf kind of laid out with all the competitors, if you were. We all were very friendly and we said, hey, I know you're here. I'm not going to cross this line. Anything under it comes to us. Anything over it, we give to you. Awesome. It was a great, great thing. On the other side of it is that on the southern border, it was southern, southeastern border, I guess, was another one where we were like, hey, this is the line. We don't want to go over it. We're going to give you all of our work. Anything over that, just throw And people love that because it's out of their range. It's out of your range to go the other way. So that's kind of how you have to work that sometimes. Um, we did sub it. If you're not subbing work, sub work with guys. Just make that relationship. It's awesome. It's the same reason you want to go to the huge convention to get those relationships. But subbing work sometimes works that way. And I'm not driving five man hours of driving to get that. It just does not make sense to me. It screws up your whole day. Like tightness is what works for us. If I could do a job here and then do one three houses down, that's how I'm going to make the most amount of money. I've had jobs, literally. We did this um, complex. It was a uh, townhome complex. And all these townhome people we knew when the board meeting was, we'd send somebody out and we'd sit in the board meeting for that that uh, spring and fall. And they're like, oh, I just want to let you know here's Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. It does a lot of these properties back here. We're going to try to schedule the same day because we get a huge discount if we do. Uh, go ahead and talk to him at the end. And I just sit there very nicely. I don't talk or do anything. People walk up, oh, hey, how are you? I saw you over there on Doris's house there. You hear my accent? This is where I come from, right? So, um, you know, we would talk to people, hand out cards. Oh, it's great. I scheduled days and days and days of work in there. And it was all next to each other. I would do neighbor's houses where I wouldn't even move my truck. These townhomes were awesome. They were one 99 ish and they were all casement crank outs. Super easy. And we would charge like one 69 if they put in one of these days that we were already there. And we would literally do one. The outside guy always finishes a little bit sooner. He would go over to the next one introduce himself, start on that house while the other guy is still on this house, saying goodbyes, going through everything, getting everything signed, walking out with the check. He'd walk next door and do that one. The truck wouldn't even leave the first person's driveway. We're just going to leave that there. Should take us just a few minutes. We'll be back. It was it was great, right? That is how tight you want to make your jobs if possible because you're not driving then. There's no steering wheel time that you're paying for. There's no gas used. There's no setup and tear. Now, how long does it take you? to take your whole belt off and do that, you know, or if you're driving, how long does it take you? Or you're wasting man hours that way. So try to be as tight as possible with your route and getting those really far ones. That's, that's key to it. It really is. Uh, and the last way, uh, that I usually, I want to say usually, but that I've kicked people to the curb for, and this is going to be the one that everybody's going to send me those angry emails. Go ahead and do it. Comment down below and tell me how full of it I am. I am okay with it. But is a customer that is too nitpicky. Now, this does not mean that we do terrible work and I don't want people looking. No. What it is, is customers who will routinely go through every single window with you, stand on your shoulder, watch through everything, and then when they're all done, they find 10 windows out of the 15 that you somehow have to go back on. 
Oh, there's a spot there. I can't see the spot. Oh, it's a smudge right there. Well, you just touched the window. Well, there's a smudge on it now. Really? I had a lady to do that. She would touch the window. Every time she saw something, she would point to it. And she goes, right where my finger touched. That's a smudge now. I know. That's how it marked the window. <sighs> like, I can't. I literally can't. If I was a tween, that's what I would say. But... I'm not. So what I said was, the next time we were there, I said, hey, last time we were there, we did, unfortunately, underbid your job. We do have to raise that up by $50 if you do want service. Now, this is when people are calling us in because I knew she was a PETA. It's a pain in the, you know what? Well, I can't do that. I said, well, I do apologize. You know, I always hate to do these uh, increases, but if you can't find anybody else, let us know and we'd, we'd be happy to come there. But that's how I get rid of people that way is I would just overcharge because on a job, it's going to take me some more time, but I'm going to charge for the time. I can put up with a little old lady who just wants to talk and maybe is lonely. And I don't do that very often because I'm okay with people being picky and looking at the quality because I know we do great work. What I'm a little bit not going to tolerate is people who are over the top, over the top. We had a lady also earlier on who uh, was the only person that I can remember in the... 10 plus years that we've done a seven day rain guarantee. I didn't do it from the beginning, but seven day rain guarantee. We had one person call and she would call every time we were there. She'd go, well, you got to come back, redo those windows. It rained. <sighs> um, we're going to come back. We'll look at those windows. And if there's any spots, we'll make sure to take care of it. There never was ever because rain is clean. I mean, that's why you have a seven day rain guarantee. So people don't cancel on you in the first place. And uh, she was one of those I really had to sit back and figure out what I was going to do because it just wasn't worth keeping her around. And I hope you don't have anybody in your roster you don't want to keep around. But if you do, think about it. Make some changes. Make yourself healthier. Make yourself happier. And kick a client to the curb if need be. But that's this week's episode. If you are still listening, thank you so much. Make sure to review us on iTunes, Google Play, wherever you're listening to by the way, iTunes is going away, so I don't know what that means for it. But comment down on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up on the video. It always makes sense. And most, most, most importantly, order your supplies through me for everything. Big, little, convention tickets, anything. doesn't matter. 862-312-2026. Now write this down. 862-312-2026. Snag that number. It's my cell. Text me, call me, whatever. I want to put your orders in for you. And if you do, this week, um, the code is kicking a client. That's a morbid code, but give me that code. You order it through me, not through the website. There's nowhere to put that on. You have to order it through me. I'll give you 5% off your order if you do that. So please let me know. And uh, yeah, go to thehugeconvention.com. Get your tickets. Just thanks for everything, guys. Really, really, really appreciate it. Thanks for your kind words, too. It does mean a lot. So go out there and uh, kick the client if you need, it, need to. And until next week, go out there and be epic.